70 feet. Are they still on? The range is sick. I've been alive long enough to know the struggle. You've got some content on here, and you want to get it on here. Or you've just installed a new flat screen TV, but your sources are down here. What if there was a way to have an HDMI cable, but less of the cable? There's no way that works. So the crack with these is actually quite simple. It's left me scratching my head, shall we say. Now I've actually been testing these things for over a month in the studio and out. And I have to say, they're sick, but I wouldn't hold your breath for them. And I'll tell you why at the end of the video. So in the pack, you basically get two separate cables and that's it. One labeled RX and one labeled TX. I'm gonna plug this into the HDMI on my MacBook and then I've got a USB-C to A just to convert this cable here to give it some power. So now we take the RX, the receiver, give it some power via USB and plug in that HDMI cable. The light will stabilize on the TX and then you have your image. So the answer to do they work? Well, the answer is yes, but the question is how well? Now here we are presented with our first problem because I'm using these on my MacBook and this thing comes with a lovely ProMotion display at 120Hz. So now navigating this same Mac using the wireless transmitter on my portable monitor feels a little bit slow and sluggish and that's because it is. However, that doesn't mean to say that it's not going to be good for movie watching because it is. You can see that this looks absolutely fine and there's a lot of movement on screen right now. But for casual viewing at 1080p 30fps, it's fine. <laughs> test, one, two, three. Okay, so let's do our range test. I've got a USB-C hub here with an HDMI capture card plugged into my laptop. Now the transmitter is plugged directly into our camera. My driveway is almost 200 feet long, so we'll see if we can get all the way down to the end and see if you guys can still see and hear me. Probably about 30, 40 foot now. I have no idea when this has stopped, by the way. Like, no, we could get to the end of the drive and it could still be on, so I don't know. 100 feet probably now. Okay, we have reached the end, 170 feet. Are they still on? Let's see if we can get across the road. I would say about 200 foot, so it might still be on. I don't know though. How is it? How did it make it all the way to 200 feet? <laughs> the range is sick. So could I tell that this Xbox isn't connected directly to the TV via an HDMI cable? I would know something's up. There is definitely a slight bit of noticeable input latency, but it's not that bad. There's a few sticky frames here and there and a little bit of tearing. You can see on the screen there, if you go back and pause that, weird tearing and artifacts, but there's a lot going on on this screen. And through my short time of using these, I can hazard a guess that this is using what's called a VBR. So it will vary the amount of bit rate it will send over the wireless link, depending on what's actually on the screen. So for example, looking at these floor tiles, far easier to render than this entire scene here. And as you can see, as soon as I look up, there's a bit of glitching going on. Whereas if you look back at the floor, it's actually really smooth. And the live feed that you guys can see now is being taken from the actual device itself. But online, FPS shooters, sweaty, play. This isn't gonna work for you, I wouldn't say. However, if you are having the family round, you've got a Nintendo Switch and you wanna play some board games on your Switch, on your TV, yeah, this will work absolutely fine. And obviously these guys aren't pitching that this is meant to be used or should be used for gaming. Like I say, it works fine with TV or a movie, for example. This is really pushing it to its limits. So far, I've been pleasantly surprised with these little inexpensive wireless HDMI adapters. I like the fact that they're powered via USB, meaning that if you've got a spare USB port on the back of your TV, you can plug and power the receiver behind your TV without the need for any extra power adapters. If you have a look on Amazon, you can see that there's a fair few here that do include big bulky dongles, whereas this, it literally just looks like a cable with a USB and HDMI on the end and everything's built in. No external antenna or anything protruding here. 
So these are the ones that I bought, just shy of 50 pounds and decent reviews. And I think with an item like this, you really do have to set your expectations. For example, if I was a little bit naive and thought to myself, oh, I'm gonna get these to play all of my competitive games on my TV in the lounge, it's just not really gonna work for that. But if you've got a projector in your office, for example, and you want to cast your presentation from your laptop to the projector that's on the roof, this is perfect. If you want to watch a TV show or a movie in 1080p, this will be absolutely fine. But Alex, you're probably wondering, why would it be okay for watching a movie, but not okay for playing games, for example? And that's because these things use a variable bitrate, as I explained earlier. To put it plainly, if there's a lot of movement on your screen, these devices are gonna struggle to process all of that data. Let's say you're in a game moving your character's POV from left to right, it is going to struggle. But for a movie or something like this, a YouTube video for example, playback of this is just me moving in the frame. Everything else is still. So you only need a lot of bitrate if a lot of things on the screen are moving at the same time. I actually did some in real life testing last weekend with these too. I was running a live stream for my events company, Summit Events, and we had a camera at the back of the floor. And I was actually using these wireless adapters to get the image from the camera over to my laptop for streaming for Instagram. The event ran for eight hours and these things didn't let up at all. Now in my home lab, I have a mini PC from a company called Geekom. And nine times out of 10, this PC is sat there to view my CCTV cameras. This mini PC is then plugged into my HDMI distribution so I can view the cameras on any of the TVs in the house. But I'd like a screen permanently on in my kitchen with the cameras on. That can't be too hard to ask, can it? Only problem is I can't get an HDMI cable to this location very easily. Well, bring in these little adapters. I honestly think they're per perfect for this. Connected into a USB-C dongle that then connects to the mini PC, plugging the receiving end into this small screen in my kitchen allows me to view my CCTV on this screen 24 seven. Now I thought for 50 pounds, these things were gonna break or let up very easily. And I have to admit the build quality really isn't there. However, for the past three to four weeks, these things have been displaying my CCTV cameras on this monitor 24 seven throughout the day and throughout the night when I'm sleeping too. Like I never turn this thing off. So all that's to say, these things are absolutely fantastic if you set your expectations. You're not gonna be playing FPS games through them. Well, you can, but it's not great. But if you wanna watch a movie or a TV show, live stream footage from your camera to displaying your CCTVs on a rogue little display in your kitchen. Now, there is a whole load more of these wireless HDMI things on Amazon, so let us know down in the comments if you want us to buy some more and do some tests to figure out which ones are the best. I bet some of them you might be able to game with. But for 50 quid, I thought these were too good to be true and I've been pleasantly surprised. Anyway guys, my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow and I need to thank today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Shout out to our sponsor, Squarespace, the company that makes building a personalized website easier than ever. We built my website, MM Wi-Fi, on Squarespace and it's packed with all the tools that you need to make something truly unique. Squarespace is constantly innovating. The new Fluid Engine gives you total creative freedom as to how your website is going to appear from device to device, making one website look great across all devices. Plus their updated SEO tools make sure your site gets traction by pushing it out on search engines like Google to reach your desired audience. You can even integrate Squarespace memberships to build a loyal community of fans or even sign people up to a newsletter that's all under the one platform. If you're thinking of building a website, you can save yourself 10% off your first Squarespace purchase or domain by using code TechFlow or go to squarespace.com forward slash TechFlow and we'll have that linked below. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring the video.